Greetings, this is Kelvin Childress. And Hanan Muhammad. And this week we uh, are wrapping up our research into the wicked problem of rethinking teaching in the 21st century. We are going to take you through a short little presentation, show you all of the things we've learned, um, and some of the solutions that we want to propose to rethinking teaching. So first, um, first thing we have to explore is what is a teacher? Uh, previously, a teacher would be someone who stood at the front of a classroom, recited information, and expected all of the students to memorize that information. Uh, this was essential because um, previously, school was the only place people could come to get information. There wasn't an availability of information. Uh, people were not literate and able to learn information on their own or go out and read it, so they had to come to the school to memorize this information. Um, today, that's no longer the case. Now, a teacher is someone who engages with their classroom. They sit down with the students and explore things with the students. Uh, there's someone who gives differentiated instruction. They take time with that student who needs help, whether it's because they're advanced or behind or just needs special attention. Uh, it's someone who goes out, leaves the classroom, um, actually goes outside and explores with the student, uh, really engages with what the student's interests are. Um, a teacher could be a student. I mean, as a teacher, we've all experienced that time where we learn something from a student, where a student leads us into something we weren't expecting, um, and they help us and other people learn more about a topic or a topic we weren't expecting to cover. Um, a teacher can even be a kid, a younger kid who's in the class who decides, hey, I want to learn about, um, about cooking when you're giving a health class, and it leads your class to a new place that you weren't planning on originally going. So now that we know um, or have explored a little bit about what a teacher is, we can look into our wicked problem. So our wicked problem was rethinking teaching. What this means is teaching is evolving. Schools are no longer where students come to find and memorize information. Teaching in the 21st century is now about fostering a desire for inquiry and developing soft skills in students. Um, this is rethinking teaching totally to change to what our new world is and will be in the future is something that is definitely a wicked problem one that you can't just look at and come up with a solution um, one that there really is no single solution to um, to take this a little bit easier for us we broke it down into smaller more beautiful questions um, what these beautiful questions are things that we actually can answer things that there are solutions for um, some of these questions that we used to guide our thought process was um, what if students challenged um, and used critical thinking skills to challenge what they were taught, to challenge what they experienced in this world? How would that impact teaching? Um, what if teachers did not use standardized assessments to measure um, student learning and the success of their programs, but rather used a different form of assessment? Um, after coming up with this question, exploring it a little bit, we came up with the idea of what if rubrics were used to assess student learning. Uh, instead of giving a test and having students write down answers or fill in bubble sheets, uh, we observe the students. We watch how they interact. We have a, um, a set out standardized rubric that we follow to assess what we want to see from the students. And we assess these students actually by watching what they're learning and engaging with them and asking them questions rather than just putting them in a sterile environment and having them take a test and see how they do it. Um, another question that we came up with was, why do we evaluate students based on rote memory when in the real world employees are evaluated based on soft skills and employers desire soft skills? We know that employers desire soft skills. We did research into this and looked at what soft skills were desired by employers. Um, various employers and research has shown that various employers are interested in things like creativity, group work, collaboration, um, creativity, independent thinkers, leadership. Uh, but we don't really evaluate these things in the school system. And why is that? Why is that that we're teaching um, to be able to do rote memory when employers want us to produce students who have these soft skills in the future, um, things that won't be automated or can't be automated and just replaced by a robot in the future. So once we broke these down into these more beautiful questions, it made it a lot easier for us to attack this um, and actually find some solutions. So 
speaking about solutions, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these solutions that we came up with. Um, we have three solutions that we wanted to talk about and highlight that we had come up with. Steps to improving um, teaching in our world today. Uh, one, critical thinking module. So we had a survey that we sent out to people in our um, teaching network, other teachers that we knew, whether it's that we worked with or that we interact with, asking if they would prefer critical thinking um, or subject knowledge. Um, and all of the surveys came back with the teacher saying that they prefer teaching critical thinking. Um, so we know that teachers enjoy teaching students to think critically rather than memorize things um, based on them telling us. And this is something that we think we can apply. Uh, we should be encouraging teachers to move away from focusing on subject knowledge, but rather teaching students to engage and think critically about uh, what they're being taught and how they can uh, use this in the world and use this to apply the knowledge that they actually have. In addition, we uh, experience uh, and know through research that students who are critically thinking become more engaged and have a deeper learning in what their subject is. So not only are teachers interested and willing to teach critical thinking over subject knowledge, we also know um, that this is beneficial to the students. It helps them engage. Um, and helps them learn more deeply and feel like they're in control more of their learning. Another solution is using a rubric to assess students rather than standardized testing. Um, we sent out a survey to our, uh, our teachers and on a scale of one to seven, we received back that the majority of them were a six or a seven with very few of them falling below a five. Um, over 75% of the people who responded gave us a six or a seven, and um, over 95% said that they were at a level five on feeling confident to use a rubric to assess students rather than standardized testing. Um, we know that this would be a great way to measure critical thinking, group collaboration, empathy, creativity, judgment, physical skills, things that aren't always measured on uh, standardized testing, and things that we know employers are interested in. For example, the creator of Alipay, Mr. Ma, he has famously been speaking lately about how um, automation replaces the need for people who can memorize things or compute things, but automation will never be able to replace those who are critical thinkers, um, those who have creativity and those who have physical skills. And that's the future for employment in his mind, and he's someone who employs a lot of people, so we know employers are interested in this. Another thing that we know is an important solution is technology support. So we can use technology to improve teaching. We can use electronic gradebooks to give feedback to students. We can encourage group work with Google Suite, which allows us to monitor um, group work, who's participating, how well they're participating, how the group is working. And we have software that we can give feedback to, immediate feedback to students saying, this is how you did today um, in this area. These are the improvements you can make, and they can even reply back. And, create that dialogue and help a student improve rather than using a grade to just judge them. It uses um, feedback to actually support and encourage the student to learn more and become better. Uh, also, we can use technology to support teachers and help teachers grow. Um, we did a survey that showed that a lot of the teachers would feel very confident and feel more satisfied if they knew that they had someone out there who was supervising their teaching, making sure that they were doing an effective job of teaching and the students were learning and helping show areas that they can improve on their teaching and their curriculum. Um, all of the respondents gave a six or a seven on this. Survey questions. So all of the teachers we surveyed said that they would like to have someone supervising them. Um, whether it be a person or a board who's experienced sees other teachers in their school other school and other schools who teach similar subjects and giving them feedback on what areas are strong and could use improvement to improve their teaching um, without their job being on the line because they do a bad job of taking a test but actually trying to improve the teaching to benefit the students taking these solutions let's see how they fit into a tpac framework so how is our solution related to the TPAC framework? To start with the content, our solution does not change the content. Instead, we change what we do with it. So the students 
will have to apply the content they learn in a project where they will have to use these these skills, the material, the standards, the knowledge that they are taught in a subject, take all of these and apply it in a project in real life that they see or do daily. So, so the students will have to apply really their critical thinking and take what they can use from the material. The students will also have to really apply their soft skills, such as collaboration between them and other people, other students, to be able to build something outside of the school. They will have to be creative and really think outside the box. Then when we look at the pedagogy, how would it help this content to be delivered? Each of these projects will be based on group work, so students will have to interact with other students, where their project will be assessed based on a rubric instead of classical tests, so students will be graded based on their collaboration skills, their creativity, how, how much they can connect what they study to their project, and so on. So the skills will be focused on this project with the, using the rubric. Lastly, the technology. How will the technology support this approach? So what we believe that Google Suite would, would be the best choice because teachers will be able then to monitor how much hair, hair students are interacting and how much work each of them is putting into the work. Also, the students are free to use all the resources online. This will help them to question, to search, to look how they can apply what they learn in mathematics and science, how can they apply it in real life projects. So this is how the technology will help. All together, these different parts will work closely to shape the new education reform. Maybe the most important question we should ask now is whether or not our solution is scalable and applicable across regions. There is a lot of research done to study the effects and influences of culture on education, such as the paper Alice in the Middle East and Influence of Culture on Curriculum Development in Ghana. These research papers proves that culture does play a role on education and the curriculum. However, our solution does not alter the curriculum and really preserve it for each country. Instead, our solution changes how we use the curriculum and the content taught to our students. So in that way, we reduce the risk of our solution to fail and it has more promising result than changing or altering a curriculum. Thank you um, for coming along today while we explore the wicked problem of rethinking teaching. Uh, we hope that some of this was um, encouraging to you, that this problem is difficult and complex, but there are answers out there to help improve and start taking, ste start taking steps in the right direction. Um, we would really appreciate any feedback you have, anything you learned from, anything you liked. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.